This church has such an excellent reputation. When you say, oh, well, I go to church in Potter, and somebody will say, oh, that church, I know exactly what they mean. We are looked upon as being a very excellent example. We'll be celebrating 150 years that this church has been here. This church is still beautiful and it's still going after 150 years and I can feel the love of the Lord in this church. I love people and I, I know they love me. There's a certain amount of welcoming and feeling of belonging even if you come your first time. We are a very welcoming church and I think that's the biggest plus that we have, that we, we have open arms and welcome people when they come wherever they came from or whatever kind of background they had growing up and stuff like that. When you go down to church and you get in that back room back there, you got a hard time getting out to your car because this one wants to talk to you, this one wants to visit you, I haven't seen you for a while, giving you a hug and stuff like that. And that makes a church, it makes the people to be in together. I think it's so amazing the amount of kids that are here. We have such a young church. It's exciting, especially in this day and age as well. We're not anchored on a denomination. We're not anchored on entertaining our church members. We are anchored on teaching the scriptures and anchored itself in Jesus Christ and what he did for us to save us from our sins. And I think that's why we're still around. That's why we're still growing and that's why we're gonna keep growing until Christ comes again. 150 years of Peace Church Potter. I think it's awesome to think that all those generations before came to this church and worshiped and grew and had families and passed, but we still are continuing at that same good foundation of believing in Christ and the Bible. And here we are, 150 years later, still growing, still believing, and still living God. And so with that, I say, I love this church, Peace Church, Potter, Wisconsin. I've been part of this church for over 80 years, that's correct. During the war, my dad decided he could save a few cents if he didn't have to drive to Reedsville and they would come to Potter. So that's how we came to this church. When it was confirmed, I came quite a bit with my bicycle. We were busy in the farm. My dad says, well, I don't have time to go. You can miss. And I said, no, we can't miss. So I'd come with a bicycle. And of course, back then we didn't have 10 speed bicycle, we just had that and quite a ride, you know, 11 miles. But uh, we did get here and we did have catechism, so it's confirmed here. I taught Sunday school in this church with Betty Becker. We taught the nursery school. And I remember a lot of get togethers at church at that time. They had like soup suppers, and all the funerals were in the basement for food and things like that, I remember. I can remember having BBS downstairs and we used to have it for the whole day. And the youth group was awesome back then. We had hay rides back then. And I can remember having Sunday school down in the basement with these partitions. Going to choir, we had to wear this three-piece black gown, white over the top and a collar. And we had to march up single file through the back up many steps to get up into the back of the church to sing. Mrs. Rosen was very strict about that. We had to look nice. I remember when I was only 16, Gladys Schultz, she was the full-time organist here for many years. She allowed me to begin playing a brand spanking new organ. And eventually, I became the organist. I also remember we had father and son banquets here which was all as good, the women would serve us. And then they had the mother and daughter banquets, which well then we had our return to favor and help them out. <laughs> so that worked out too. The friendships gained have been just phenomenal. 
especially working with the ladies, making that potato salad for how many years down there was a treat. Audrey Stecker and Gloria Duco and Elmi Weeding and my mom, Vera Casper, all of those girls were a treat to work with and taught us so much. As a young person sitting in the pew, I think we went two to three hours. They were long. Can you imagine me sitting in a chair for two to three hours and listening to all those preachers and none of them gave up one minute of their time so they would get done sooner. They could talk long. One thing I remember vividly were the German services we had, I think once a month. And yes, even if we didn't understand a single word, we had to come. One of the funnier moments that I remember when I was a young kid, uh, me and one of my classmates here, they had ice cream social and we were trying to help out and we spotted uh, a whole bunch of pies they had. Ricky says, oh, that pecan pie looks good. Bill and I says, go hide it in the other Sunday school room and, and we'll eat that. The three of us will eat that. We started eating it. We got about halfway through and then uh, one of the adults caught us and that put the end to that kibosh and uh, we were no longer asked to help, put it that way. I remember waiting on tables for the pancake suppers and that's where I learned how to make potato pancakes. The only problem was with our potato pancakes, Woomer didn't give us any maple syrup so we could eat maple syrup with our pancakes. But now I make my own so. In the Sunday school, tried to sneak out once. Boyer come out there and found me sitting in Marriott's car. Had to come back in, finish the, finish the program. I left the church for a short time when I became a teacher. And then when I came back, we had a new minister. And his name was Mark. The next year we were married. <laughs> it was so nice of the search committee to find my husband. <laughs> I taught Sunday school and I taught for a number of years and it was really interesting because in fifth and sixth grade these kids knew everything. In seventh and eighth grade they refused to share anything and then when they got into high school they were questioning everything. So it was, it was quite interesting to see as the kids grew up how they looked at things differently. Our church did a whole turnaround from the front to back. I mean, it used to be 10, 12 steps in order to get into church, you know, so I'm just amazed how this, we just walk in now. The remodeling was exceptionally well done. I know there was opposition to it at times, but the remodeling was beautifully done. The balcony was behind us, the piano was upstairs, the horn, the choir was up there. A lot of the older people that were here, they all worked together. Everybody worked together, did their jobs here. Did a fantastic job. It's kind of like the old story, they say one person can build anything solid, but it takes another person to make it look nice. Well, Merlin was the one that made it look nice. The Fishers were good at taking uh, railroad ties to the sawmill and getting them done. I remember doing that as a young man. They were good at busting out the concrete that we had in the basement. Pastor Rosenau at that time, was very much involved in hanging around. I remember one time that somebody hit a finger or something with a hammer and they were gonna turn around and let loose and there stood Pastor Rosen on. It was just, mm -mm -mm, nobody said a word. I'll never forget one day we were taking a wall out. There was a wall down in the basement all the way through. Well, the air hammer's pretty heavy, so I didn't have the strength to move way up there, so I started down here. He said, no, you start at the top. Of course, I couldn't, so then they fired me. So then I had a, that's just what they told me. We're firing you, you know, so. It was a lot of hard work, but we had a lot of fun. I would describe Peace Church of Potter as a warm, loving, caring, Bible-believing group of people that love God and treasure those moments. The growth, the warmth of this church is what just makes you want to come back again. Been here roughly a little over a year, and what drew us here to the church in Potter is the conservative values that the church has, and I love that we have a youth sermon. 
it's the first time I've ever been at a church where there's that many youth that attend and also come up in front and come for the children's sermon. So as a member with a younger family, I think that's huge and that's something that we continue to focus on here. We came to Peace Church about 2019, we found our way here, and we were told by multiple friends that had come to this church that this was definitely a hidden gem, that you don't think you're gonna find something this great in Potter. So Caleb and I came with the kids, and um, we were sold the first day with the music, with Pastor Mark and his message, and being so biblically based, and that you don't get that in a lot of churches, and. We get that every Sunday and we're so blessed for that. I just love coming, I really do. Pastor Mark gives a good message. You leave here and you feel refreshed to start another new week. It's a wonderful place to be. And I think that people are really friendly. They tell you good morning, give you hugs. It's wonderful to come here wouldn't give it up for anything. This was the first year that I worked at Gospel Fest. There's people that come from everywhere and the performers come from all over the U.S. and it's just a uplifting crowd. It was really enlightening to work there and also to see everybody praising the Lord. You do have the Gospel Fest. Nowadays I just kind of drive the golf cart and pick people up and I always would ask the people when I'd pick them up in the golf cart I'd ask them where they were from. Some were Milwaukee, the whole area. I was glad they were here. This church has always been one that's able, for whatever reason, financially, we've always come and met whatever our goals was, whether it was a mission goal when we were part of the UCC years ago. Now we send up independent missions, and the Gospel Fest is a big one of that. We always seem to meet our mission goals and send funds to wherever it needs to be and this church has always come through and I think it's just the fact of the love and the faith that we have for God and through Jesus that we do that. I think it looks very bright. We have a wonderful pastor here and I, a lot of people are excited to come each and every Sunday, so I think the future looks very bright for this place. I really do. We have a lot of members, and that's something in this day and age to have a lot of members with children. And I hope it keeps up that way and that we continue to get more members and people that will participate, which right now we have that. I'm hoping that with the amazing Sunday School program and the youth group and all the things that we offer for our kids that they'll keep growing here and even though life might take them other places as they continue to grow up, if they find their way back home in Calumet County that they come back to Peace Church. We believe the future of Peace Church is bright because the Bible promises us that Jesus would build the church and the gates of hell would not prevail against us. And as long as the name of Jesus is lifted up, as long as we love one another, I believe that the anointing of God is going to continue to be on this place and the church is going to continue to grow. And that's the most important thing is we want people to come to know Jesus and open the door of their life to Him. And then we can love Jesus together as family in the Lord. My prayer is that it will continue to grow in love and care as it has been and that people will gain the knowledge of Christ and learn the fellowship and learn how to love one another. If that can go on for another 150 years, we got it made. Amen.